Ah, oh, I'm back in the S tank again. As a kid, long time ago when I was nine years old, and actually drove it. A lot of people would say it's absolutely crap. There was always oil on the floor. It's, it's dirty, it's uh, cramped, it's, uh, you bang your head. It might look like they have done stupid things. The design, it's so thought through. So you can more compare it to, to a fighter aircraft. This is absolutely fantastic tank. I love this tank. In Tank Chats Reloaded, we'll be revisiting old favorites from the Tank Chat series and taking a new look at the stories behind these fighting machines. Please remember to like, subscribe, or click the little notification bell if you don't want to miss out on these videos. And I'd just like to say thank you to all our patrons for making this possible. Please join them if you can. I'm Stefan Carlson. I'm the director and the creator of the Swedish Tank Museum. And I have a long association with the S Tank. When I was a kid, I, I lived in the south of Sweden and there were, were soldiers passing through on the streets uh, quite often. And uh, they had uh, exchange with tank regiment once in a while. And that was during a school holiday in, in uh, February. And I went out there on my bicycle uh, and all of a sudden there were tanks in, in the wilderness, out in the woods. And I stood there watching nine-year-old kid and uh, the guys in the tanks, they felt sorry uh, for me standing there in, in the snow. So they asked me, I come have a look. So I went down up on, on the tank and they actually put me in, into the driver's seat. And uh, I think that I drove it. Maybe it was a, the tank commander who drove it for me. I'm not sure, but I, I was standing there in the driver's position, nine years old. I remember how hard it was to push the accelerator to, to get the tank moving. That must have stayed on in my memory for a long time. So things, they happen when you are young and they can change your life forever. And sometimes when I meet um, uh, parents at the museum with their young kids, uh, I can tell them that um, be a bit careful. This guy might, might turn up as an officer later on. He will be like me. And in the Swedish army at the time when, when I was <clears throat> supposed to do my conscript service, we, it was a national service that we had to do and I wanted to join the tank force. And during that period, um, during my years, I realized that I was more interested in the technology than in how to use them. And also been part of seeing what's happening with the tank, how it's working, the problems they had with it and all the well dirty words they said about the tank at the time. Well, from my point of view, it had been absolutely the best years of my life to be in the army. A lot of people, they ask about was this tank reliable or if, well, there's a debate is it even a tank because it has no turret? Um, in my opinion, yes, it is a tank because it was designed to be a tank and it was used as a tank. So it's the purpose of the vehicle is a main battle tank, even if it doesn't have a turret. That's my personal opinion. But there are two sides, the people who absolutely hate this vehicle because it's the worst ever design on this planet and other people who think it's great, it's the most fantastic vehicle ever, ever built. Um, and I'm standing in the middle. I listen to both of them and I understand their opinion, but it's hard to say which one is best. It depends on, on the situation. And the vehicle, the design and the idea is quite clever to have a long gun good protection at the front, the crew in the middle, and all the ammunition storage at the rear. And the idea from the beginning was to have a tank that could fire very accurate on long ranges, instead of using a 
turreted tank like the Centurion or the Leopard 1 or M60 or whatever, which doesn't have that good stability firing on maybe 2,000 meters or more at the time during the early 1960s. That was a bit tricky to, to be that good on long ranges, but this one actually had the possibility to fire very long distances and hit that first the first round in, in the target. And you can always say that, well, a turreted tank is a lot better because it can fire on the move, but during the 1960s and 1970s, they were not that good at firing on the move as they are today. So most turreted tanks, they needed to stop anyway. So if you compare these tanks in different tests, which they have done, most of the, the situations, they are quite similar. And in some cases, this one is better than the one with the turret. The problems this tank had was it's very complex with engines, two engines, hydraulic system, suspension, everything working together. And all of this done with technology from the 1960s, trying to bring it to, to work and to be something that could be reliable over time was a bit complex. So they had a lot of problems with, prob well, anything could break in the tank compared to the Centurion, which was basically a, a simple chassis moving the tank, the, the, the gun around. So that was a lot more simple tank that would be a lot more reliable. This was a bit more complex, so it had a lot more problems. But the C version, which this is, there they could fix all these problems. So with the C version, it actually got as good as they wanted to have it from the beginning. I think that the, the design, it's so thought through. Uh, you have, uh, if, if you study it, uh, and you, you realize, well, they have thought of everything, uh, even if sometimes it, it might have gone a bit beyond. They have had a lot of engineers do the most ingenious thing that you can ever dream of, and they did. Uh, so in some cases, it might look like they have done stupid things, but they have thought, uh, this is why we did it. They had another angle to look at it. So it, you, you need to understand at the time what were they thinking, what was the doctrine, what kind of enemy, etc., and try to understand how they, how they thought at the time. There's always a question about how good would this be if we ha would have been invaded from the Soviet Union, which was the big th threat, and what kind of tanks would actually go over the sea. And when we were in the, ar in the army, we realized that the best tanks in the Soviet Union, they were pointing towards Central Europe because there was the, the, the big enemy, the big threat. And we didn't think that the best tanks would appear on Swedish soil. And the first vehicle that would appear would be something quite light, something amphibious, etc. So I think that from our point of view, and my opinion is that we would have done very well because you have to go over the sea to be able to invade Sweden if you don't go up north. Uh, and uh, there's only a small sector where, where you can actually invade Sweden over land. So getting ready and be able to, to fight the enemy would have been fairly easy. And we were prepared to stand still and f wait for the enemy, not to attack them. Uh, so you, you have to think of how Sweden were supposed to be defended and against what. And long time in, into the 1980s, 1990s, we didn't think that T-72s, for instance, would appear on Swedish soil. So we would have probably 
been facing T55 or, or so and against that, this would have been absolutely fantastic. From my experience, it's quite good tank. It was fairly reliable, not, not uh, as reliable as many others, but it was not as bad as the reputation many times says. I have one memory from my training during the, the officer's school when I was riding as a, the rear driver at the S-Tank together with my, my colleagues from, they, they've been serving on the S-Tank for over a year, but I had at the time not very much knowledge from the tanks when we were stopping at a refueling position out in the wilderness uh, where we had trucks with diesel and uh, the commander or driver, I don't remember who, uh, asked me to go and grab um, a sack of rags. Uh, okay, I, it was well, like this big with rags and I came back to the tank and I asked them um, uh, in where, where should I put it? And they just looked at me and said, on the floor because there was always oil on the floor, hydraulic oil or uh, transmission fluid or whatever. So in many cases during the maneuvers, people had the feet up to here in oil. So it was just, just to, to make it a bit more comfortable inside. This tank is quite cramped on the inside. You can more compare it to, to a fighter aircraft where you, you, you sit in your position, driving the tank forward or, or reverse under the three crew members. From the beginning, this tank was designed to use only two crew members, uh, the driver and commander. They didn't have the rear driver, but then they realized that to maintain a vehicle, you need to be more than two because things are so heavy. So you need to be at least three people to, to be able to, to change tracks and, and things like that. But to be inside the, the, a vehicle like this is very cramped and it's a different from, quite different from sitting in a, a main battle tank with, with a turret where you often have a lot more space on the inside. And here you sit and it's not very much room to, to do anything. You cannot stand up in the tank. And if you have been flying for a long time across the Atlantic, uh, sitting in the same space for uh, many, many hours, you get sore in, in the knees. They, they hurt after a couple of hours. And it's the same here. It, it's so painful just to be sitting in the same position for so, such a long time. You need to to, to stand up, to, 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 to do some exercise, to, to, to be able to move the, the body. And it's impossible. So this tank is more something that you can compare to uh, Russian uh, Soviet T-72, which is also a bit the same. You, you sit in your seat and that's it. You sit quite close together so you can, uh, well, you can touch each other. Compare this one with, with a turreted tank, there you can stand up, you can almost walk around and uh, one, one thing is doing what you need to do part of the, of, uh, the day. You need to have a pee or, or do something else. It, it's impossible to do it inside the tank. In a tank with a turret it's a lot easier. And there you can also lay down in at least a few places to, to sleep inside the tank. Here it's impossible because you're just sitting and uh, you cannot get anywhere. So uh, uh, it's cramped. So you need to get out once in a while just to relax and, and uh, stretch your legs. After I left, left the army, I went to the museum business and trying to keep vehicles like this running after they have stopped into service is interesting, but it's not that very easy. And the, the biggest problem that we have is that we don't have much spare parts uh, left since they were all scrapped uh, when the tanks were taken out of service. And, and a lot of times when you ask people about technical problems that we are now facing, uh, they don't remember. 95, these were 
taken out of service and that's quite a long time ago and you cannot go anywhere and just buy parts and you cannot take a box with a lot of electronics and go to someone and say please repair it because it's it's too too difficult so the, the spares that we might find we need to to collect them and to keep them in order to keep these vehicles running uh, for the future but most of times we we need to to read in the manuals to read the diagrams, the electric di diagrams, to, to try to understand why is this happening, trying to find a solution, uh, trying to find parts that are not available today, maybe from, from another vehicle, uh, and also exchanging experience from other museums who also run this vehicle, what problems have they had recently or how did they fix them? Things that are quite complicated are also, uh, there, there is a limit in time how, for how long you can actually run them. Uh, because things, they deteriorate, they fall apart, uh, they stick together, um, electric parts uh, doesn't work anymore, uh, the plastics inside, etc. So it's in, in a tank from the First World War, it's just metal parts that you can weld together again, or you can machine a new part. In this one, it's a lot more complicated. When, when you are a conscript, then, then you leave the service. Um, it might be the case that you, you hate this tank so much, you will never ever return to it again. Um, but then later on, you forget all the bad things and then you remember and I, I still, still remember when, when I smell certain oil, I, ah, I'm back in the S tank again. I, 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 I can feel the, the, the sense of being there. So uh, I think that there will be people who actually, uh, they, they, they wanted to be, to be back again and they really love the tank, but they are also people that actually hate it. And it's the same on the Centurion tank. They never ever touch it again because it's dirty, it's uh, cramped, it's, uh, you bang your head in every, everything. It's a smell of oil, diesel fumes, etc. So um, it's a special uh, situation, but um, I loved it. And I think a lot more people than I have done it. So we, when we, we feel the, the smell of the hydraulic oil, it starts raising hair and I'm back again. I think that the legacy of, of, of this tank will, will uh, from, from the people who, who have used it, um, a lot of people would say it's absolutely crap. Um, I have a lot of colleagues who still hate it more than anything on the world, on the planet. It's a reliability. It broke down so often, and they had a lot of problems with it. And uh, I think that they were they thought they they were sort of cheated by 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 the army. That this was something that they were forced to use against an enemy that would have something better. But uh, this is what you have and this is what you have to do the best of with, with this and, and you can dream on anything um, but this is what we, what we had. We could have a tractor and a Mauser uh, rifle instead. Would that have be, been better? No, it would have. But now we have a lot of people who have been doing uh, Wargaming, etc., online and, and reading about it, and, and they, they are building up another story. So, uh, depending who you ask about the opinion, uh, I love this tank, but uh, I'm a bit um, different, I think, from the rest of the people. This is absolutely fantastic tank, even if it had some drawbacks. <laughs>